Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Miller, Official Secretary to Her Excellency the Governor of New South Wales. On behalf of Her Excellency Mr Wilson, welcome to Government House this afternoon for these uh, very special awards. I'm sorry to bring the music to such an abrupt uh, uh, stop, but uh, in a moment when I announce Her Excellency's uh, arrival, I would invite you to stand at that time and then um, after that, Her Excellency will address us and then uh, I'll invite you to be seated prior to that. Her Excellency will address us and then we'll have the um, presentation of the uh, awards. I will say a word later. As you know, the situation has uh, changed in terms of uh, the importance of our COVID safety. We do, um, whilst we've cancelled other events tonight, tomorrow, Wednesday in the House, we thought that this was an important thing that we needed to continue this afternoon, but I will say a bit more about our COVID safety uh, before we go to re refreshments. Ladies and gentlemen, Her Excellency, the Honourable Margaret Beasley, Governor of New South Wales, and Mr Dennis Wilson. Wajiri Gamarua, Dian Babana Gamarada, Gadigal Nagara. Good afternoon, hello, welcome. In the language of the Gadigal, the traditional owners of the land on which Government House stands, on which this very wonderful ceremony is to take place this afternoon. And I pay my respects to the Gadigal, their elders, past and present, and the always an important emerging young leaders and to all the Aboriginal nations of this state. Dennis and I, so pleased to see you. Uh, it's not that we were thinking we wouldn't see you this afternoon, but I can tell you things are rapidly uh, changing, very much so uh, in this state. Uh, but this is such an important occasion, the 2021 Humanitarian Awards, which has been presented, and I think this in itself is important, that this is in many ways um, a collaboration of organisations. It's a collaboration of organisations to honour and acknowledge those who have done so much for a particular section of our community. As you know, last year, these awards were done virtually, and I was there with a video message but I think to be able to gather, to be here today together, small numbers, but that's, an, that's a blessing as it's turned out, uh, and masked up, we have to do that. It's not a great ask, but it's a slight inconvenience. But you know, the city is pretty nervous again. And can I just say thank you to each and every one of you for every time that you do the right thing. and. Uh, overcome the inconvenience and, uh, and do it with such good grace. So thank you to everyone in the room for that. When we think back on the last 18 months, it's been very challenging. It's been challenging for everyone. Uh, notwithstanding that, and despite this present, let's hope it's a hiccup and a minor hiccup, but um, overall our restrictions have been quite minimal and very reasonable. But the experience for those of us who've got a job, we've got a home, we have a car, we have family, we have friends, we have all those support networks around us. Um, it's not the same for people who, are, who don't have those benefits naturally around them. The position for the refugees, for the asylum seekers, and we know, and you know, that they've been particularly hard hit, socially, economically, in terms of access to services, and not only because of what they're experiencing here. COVID-19 is spreading, and increasingly so it would seem, within countries of first asylum and refugee camps throughout the world. Uh, the home countries of many refugees and asylum seekers are the worst hit as the pandemic rips through those communities. 
And this has heightened the anxiety and the worrying uh, amongst the refugee survivors, uh, particularly those who've been through torture. Being a refugee or an asylum seeker itself means the person has been through a traumatic experience. And I think bringing back the worry, worry about families, worries about families who are endangered, not only because of the political situation in their countries, but now because of this health crisis, uh, just adds to that anxiety. And then there's the more immediate impact here at home in Australia, hopefully their home in due course. Uh, we know for refugees who are here, this is now their home, but also for the asylum seekers, the lack of employment opportunities or the falling off of employment opportunities in the last 18 months. The lack of those social connections, which are so vital when someone comes to a new place. That question of how do you put the next meal on the table? Those types of things too often have been the daily fare for this particular section of our community, refugees and asylum seekers those who are just new to making a home after more traumatic circumstances, those who are hanging on, hoping that Australia will be their home. You know, over, the, over this last year, 18 months or so, in my role as governor, uh, I've been able to see the responses of our community to these extraordinary circumstances. There was a not very um, generous response in those first perhaps six weeks or so of the pandemic. You will all remember it. But fortunately, when people seem to have got over that, the overwhelming response of the community has been very positive. In particular, this room today is full of those who have responded with the compassion and the adaptability that's not only necessary, but I think which marks us out as the good people of Australia that we really are. At Starts, for example, you transitioned very quickly to provide counselling and other services by telehealth, which has become fundamental, uh, and other online services. Even with the pandemic, you provided, and I've been told, this is the figure I've been given, 6,260 clients around New South Wales in the 12 months to June 2020, with over 1,400 of those in the regional areas, and we've just been out in the regions, and we know how essential these types of services are there. The Refugee Council of Australia, you've advocated fiercely, as you always do, and you've worked urgently to alleviate the hard-hitting impacts of the lockdowns and the policy positions. And not only for the refugee people, but as I said, the people seeking asylum who have that added anxiety all the time, every day. Will that visa come through? You've undertaken a survey. We know increasingly the importance of good data in being able to get the message out there and to be able to get the help that is needed. So of a survey, uh, which you did in August last year, this really hit home to all of us, just how dire circumstances were amongst this part, this wonderful part of our community. 70% of people had been forced to skip meals due to hardship. Can you imagine that in modern day Australia? Even, for, even if the person, the, these members of our community are not fully integrated into the community yet, by integrated I mean have their visa status um, finalised? 70%, that's an extraordinary figure. 14% were experiencing homelessness, and another 55% were at imminent risk of homelessness. I, I, this is a tragedy, unless we deal with it, and you've dealt with it. And 88% had to struggle to pay their rent since the COVID-19 pandemic began. And those who are being honoured with the awards today, you have been at the centre of providing such necessary support around this section of our community. And I keep emphasising this is 
our community. The people whom you helping, whom you help, are part of our community as much as you, the helpers, are part of our community. You've adapted your care, you've provided the support that was necessary. You did it in a whole variety of ways, and we will hear that in the citations shortly. From very specific services, uh, responding to urgent needs, uh, through to technological support, a whole range of things. So why are we recognising you today? It's a good question. It has a pretty straightforward answer, though. We recognise you because of the work you do. These awards say, we see you. We appreciate you and we thank you. Each time that we shine a light on your service and we give voice to your stories, we give the broader community a glimpse of the best of who we are as the people of New South Wales, as Australians, out there helping each and every person in our community who needs that help. So thank you and congratulations. And I'll now ask the Official Secretary to commence the presentations. Your Excellency, Mr Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. The Refugee Community Worker Award is presented to a former refugee working on refugee issues with their own or other refugee communities in either a paid or unpaid position. This year's award is to be presented to Mr. Mohammed Reza Rastami. Mr. Rastami. <laughs> Mr. Rastami coordinated a major research study into the mental health impacts of Australia's migration policies on Iranian and Afghan asylum seekers who had arrived by boat. His research revealed that children whose families had experienced the uncertainty of life on bridging visas for up to seven years suffered almost double the rates of psychosocial difficulties as those with permanent residency. In campaigning tirelessly for the rights of children of asylum seekers, Mr Astami speaks from his own family's experience as boat arrivals who made their way to Australia in 2013 and spent 12 months in detention. In coordinating his research with over 400 community members over the last four years, Mr Rastami has taken on an informal role as a community advocate. He has done so in response to the needs of the people in the community who have re required informal, culturally sensitive support to help them find ways to build new lives while also living with visa insecurity and lack of access to services because of their asylum status. To be awarded as Refugee Community Worker of the Year, Mr. Mohammad Riza Rastani. <laughs> to be award awarded as highly commended in the Refugee Community Worker category, Mr. Basim Shamoan. Since arriving from war-torn Iraq in 2005, Mr Shamon has volunteered with more than 20 organisations in his mission to support and empower refugees. He is a highly respected and valued employee at Navitas English, where he connects with business and community organisations, listening to their needs and responding with innovative solutions. Mr Shamon ensures programs and courses such as English language, digital skills, employment training and settlement services are delivered with positive outcomes for, for participants. In 2019, Mr Shawan trained as a, a group of recently arrived people from refugee backgrounds to run fundraising projects for drought relief and to buy food and clothes for vulnerable members of the community at Christmas time. Since the onset of COVID-19, he has initiated several projects to offer support online and in person to refugee communities in the Fairfield area. To be highly commended, Mr. Basim Shamoan. Your Excellency, the Refugee Supporter Award 
is presented to a member of the broader Australian community of any background supporting and assisting refugees in any capacity, either in a paid or unpaid position. This year's award is presented to Dr David Winter. For over 15 years, Dr Winter has worked to address the complex physical, mental and social health needs of the Tibetan refugee community on the northern beaches. To assist large numbers of Tibetan refugees arriving in a short period of time, he established refugee clinics in his practice with the assistance of an on-site healthcare interpreter. During high volume settlement periods, his practice is closed to other patients two afternoons a week to enable him to conduct comprehensive health assessments for the new arrivals. The culturally sensitive health assessments combined with assertive follow-up have been very successful in the early detection and management of numerous health issues in the Tibetan community. It's estimated that Dr Winter has conducted over 1,000 health assessments for Tibetan refugees. 100% of the refugee patients who have had their first appointment in the last 15 years continue to attend appointments for the remainder of the health assessment program. Many of the Tibetan refugees continue to see Dr Winter as their preferred general practitioner after exiting the program. In 2019, Dr Winter was recognised by the Tibetan community of New South Wales for his services. Recently, he has established a COVID-19 vaccination clinic for elderly Tibetan community members and vaccination clinics for the Tibetan children. Dr Winter has, provide, has provided holistic services to Tibet, Tibetan refugees that go above and beyond services usually provided by a general practitioner. To be awarded as a refugee supporter, Dr David Winter. To be awarded as highly commended in the refugee supporter category, Ms Fiona Carr. <laughs> Ms Carr has worked as a volunteer with the Horn of Africa Relief and Development Agency since 2008. She has applied for grants and implemented and managed projects to assist the resettlement of Horn of Africa refugees in Australia, ranging from swimming programs for young African refugees, employment projects for unemployed African women, and social programs for families. Every year, over 100 children from refugee backgrounds learn how to swim and have gone, to, and have gone on to earn a bronze medallion and become swimming instructors. Many women have secured employment after participating in the projects that Ms Carr has managed. As part of her commitment to, to the work of the Horn of Africa Relief and Development Agency, she has travelled to Kenya and Uganda to oversee projects. She is a committed and relentless supporter of refugees. To be highly commended, Ms Fiona Carr. Your Excellency, the Media Award is presented to media outlets, journalists or media officers supporting, prioritising and or raising awareness of refugee issues. The 2021 Media Award is presented to Temporary, Lauren Martin, Project ed Editor, Karen Jansen McKinnon, Podcast Producer and Miles Martignoni, Head of Audio. Your Excellency, we also acknowledge today the attendance of two of the principal storytellers Tellers, and they are Zaki Hadari and Miss Hannah Abdillay. <laughs> the podcast Temporary is a collection, it's a collaboration initiated by the University of New South Wales Caldor Centre with the University Centre for Ideas and Guardian Australia. Australia. Temporary reveals the hidden lives of people who fled to Australia seeking protection and places the voices of refugees and people seeking as asylum front and centre, focusing on the subject uh, to the temporary protection regime which affects some 30,000 people in Australia. The podcast's composer is a person seeking asylum in Australia and, is, and its host and series logo designer came from refugee backgrounds. Temporary used an ethical approach that respected those who shared their stories and was sensitive to any vulnerabilities they may face. 
the Refugee Advice and Casework Service help to identify and provide prospective storytellers with initial advice and then referred them for independent third-party legal advice to ensure their full and informed consent to participate. The podcast and web website <coughs> seamlessly integrate first-person human experience with expert legal explanation. So to be awarded the 2021 Media Award, temporary, except the award on behalf of the project team today is Ms Lauren Martin. Your Excellency, the best project award is awarded to an outstanding project working with or assisting refugees. The project can be run by an individual group or organisation and can either be ongoing or completed during the last year. The 2021 award is to be presented to the Lakemba Rohingya Interagency in collaboration with the Canterbury City Community Centre. The Lakemba Rohingya Interagency was initiated to link non-government and government agencies working across the welfare, health and education sectors with members from the Burmese Rohingya Community Australia to share information, collaborate on projects to improve health, wellbeing and educational outcomes and to increase connections to local services. Since commencing in November 2017, the interagency has brought together 15 services that assist the needs of the Rohingya community with a strong emphasis on the involvement of schools and family support. The interagency is an excellent example of coordination of refugee resettlement on, at, at a local level. Inclusion of people with lived experiences further strengthens grassroots community engagement and ensures the community take up of services. So to receive the 2021 Best Project Award, the Lakemba Rohingya Interagency, and accepting the award on behalf of the interagency today is Kate McLean from the Canterbury City Community Centre. <laughs> and to be awarded the, as highly commended in the Best Project category, the Settlement Services International Care Package Program. The SSI Care Package Program was established in March 2020 to, to, in response to the impact of COVID-19 shutdowns. SSI delivered the program with the support of OzHarvest. The COVID-19 shutdowns had a particularly devastating impact on individuals and families seeking asylum or living in Australia on temporary visit visas. Without access to federal government's JobKeeper and JobSeeker payments, many families could not put food on the table, pay their bills and were at real risk of slipping rough. SSI care packages were provided to those in need free of charge and provided them with complete household groceries and essentials were between one and two weeks. Since May 2020, 1,137 households have been provided with care packages, including single adults, young family and women at risk. So to be highly commended, the Settlement Services International Care Package Program and accepting of the award on behalf of the program today is SSI's Paula Ben-David. Your Excellency, the Youth Award is presented to a young person aged 12 to 25 of refugee background, making an outstanding contribution to Australian society in their chosen field. The 2021 Youth Award is to be presented to Mr Adala Altibi. Mr Altibi has been volunteering in support of young people from refugee backgrounds for over the last four years, as well as undertaking work through paid positions. Since arriving in Australia in 2014, he studied English at the Bankstown Intensive English Centre for one year, and then completed a Bachelor of Social Work from Western Sydney University. Mr Altibi joined the Multicultural Youth Affairs Network as a Youth Ambassador in 2017. 
He completed his social work placement with the network in 2019 and took up a role as a full-time multicultural support worker, assisting young people on temporary visas. At the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Mr Altibi undertook various activities in support of isolated youth, including making available second-hand laptops to get young people connected online and referring young people to mental health support and counsellors. <coughs> In the last six years, Mr Altibi has also worked with Settlement Services International and the Lebanese Muslim Association to help young people get the support they need to thrive as they build new lives in New South Wales. To receive the Youth Award, Mr Abdullah Altibi. Your Excellency, the Education Award is presented to schools, universities and other educational institutions or individuals working at such institutions who assist former refugees by breaking down barriers to education. <clears throat> the 2021 Education Award is to be presented to Ms Eva Atkins. Ms Atkins is a cultural and linguistic diversity coordinator at TAFE New South Wales, who has worked with Core Community Services and South West Sydney Local Health District to design a program promoting career pathways in the health industry for people from a refugee background. The program provided students with the opportunity to complete a relevant skill set from the training package and attend a series of workshops facilitated by the health district. To maximise opportunities to gain employment, Ms Atkins organised work placement at a local hospital. In addition, 16 students commenced a course in Business Administration Medical in 2021, with plans for four more health programs to be delivered in semester two. Recently, Ms Atkins presented the model to the PM Blue Mountains Local Health District and the managers at the PM Hospital, and will support her work colleagues to replicate the program for refugee groups across Western Sydney. Her genuine commitment and dedication in linking education with meaningful employment pathways for people from refugee backgrounds has been widely acknowledged. To receive the Education Awards, Ms Eva Atkins. <laughs> Your Excellency, our final award this afternoon is the Rural and Regional Award which is presented to organisations or individuals working in regional areas of New South Wales to assist refugees. The 2021 Rural and Regional Award is to be presented to Ms Bindi Job. As the Deputy Principal at Karingal High School in Wagga, Ms Job has quickly and effectively made her school known as an exceptionally supportive environment for, rural, for refugee students. In particular, students from Yazidi backgrounds, a group that has been heavily persecuted in northern Iraq, have benefited, benefited from the initiatives that have been put in place at the school. Many attend the weekly study hub, a homework centre for all Karingal High School students. To aid emotional development and assist in healing from traumatic experiences, Ms Job and her colleagues developed a wellbeing program for students from refugee backgrounds, allowing students to receive emotional support and other assistance from the wellbeing team. With Ms Job's leadership, the school has accelerated the integration of students from refugee backgrounds, improving their sense of belonging and supporting their wellbeing. So to receive the Rural and Regional Award, Ms Bindi Job. I think, ladies and gentlemen, with your permission, Your Excellency, we should congratulate all our recipients again. This <laughs> so, Your Excellency, that concludes the awards ceremony. I'll now invite the Chief Executive of Office of Starts, Mr Jorge Arosh, to address us. Jorge.
would also like, uh, I think I better do this. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this Cadigal land of the Ora Nation and extend my respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. Our host, Her Excellency the Honorable Margaret Beasley, Governor of New South Wales, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Michael Miller, Official Secretary to the Governor, Paul Power, CEO of the Refugee Council of Australia and their event partner, SL Jupiter, Deputy Chair of the Stats, colleagues, friends, and very distinguished guests. As our host remarked, the refugee journey is long, arduous, often traumatic, and always complex. The services and advocacy provided by organizations, such as START and the Refugee Council of Australia, are crucial to enable refugees to regain their health, resettle successfully in Australia, and develop a sense of belonging to this beautiful country of ours. And yet, we would really struggle to be effective without the myriad of different contributions that many individuals, groups, and organizations make to ensure this resettlement journey is successful. As the, Her Excellency remarked, this year has been particularly difficult for us all, but particularly for people that have been affected um, and reminded of privations they've experienced in the past, and also being worried about the health and safety of um, their families overseas. So all of these contributions that people like, that have just been awarded uh, these awards make are valuable and incredibly important, but some really are just remarkable. They are made by people that go well beyond the scope of their jobs, as we have heard, by people who donate huge amounts of time as volunteers, by people who display extraordinary resourcefulness and ingenuity to ensure that refugees get that little bit extra that sometimes can make all the difference. Their hard work, their, ingenu their ingenuity, and their commitment are legendary and deserve public acknowledgement and recognition. It is also important that their work is also known publicly to others so they can continue to be inspired by it. This is the other equally important purpose of these awards. The fact that a job in choosing winners for each category is never easy and indeed continues to get harder every year, suggests that this seems to be working, and that there are plenty of extraordinary people that continue to arise in this wonderful state uh, of New South Wales. This is the 13th year of the New South Wales Humanitarian Awards. It is therefore extremely fitting that this year's awards, in this very hard year for all of us, are being presented here at New South Wales Government House, a place that is a symbol of civic society in our state, and by Her Excellency, the Governor of New South Wales. I'm extremely grateful that this has been possible. My thanks to you all, and my thanks to the team that made this possible. And of course, to you, Your Excellency. Thank you.